Hey there, it's Chris Fifo, your Darwin Prales product representative, and it is Tuesday morning, 10.30, and that means one thing. My box of cuttings came from Darwin, Columbia today, and we're going to propagate Flux Kapow. This is going to be one of our fabulous introductions here, the soft pink. I'm going to remove my winter packaging out of my box, check my temperature, 48 degrees, right on the money. I don't want these to be too warm, don't want to be too cold. We're doing a great job packaging. So as I open this up, Nice and organized cuttings. Here's my Phlox Kapow labeled right on the front, very easy to read. I've got a paper inside of here to absorb any extra moisture that may have uh, come out of the cutting during shipping. There is none here, there's no condensation. That is a good sign. And so as I open up my bag of cuttings here, on Phlox, the main thing I'm gonna be concerned about is, you know, I wanna inspect them for maybe some thrip damage. The uh, Phlox are susceptible to thrips. And also, they tend to be a more leafy cutting. So we really strive to have our cuttings drier in shipping so we don't get that bacterial meltdown, but we want to main maintain our turgidity as well. And so this cutting here, my leaves are nice and upright. We've got a great spec on the size of this. I think this is gonna be very easy to propagate. As we're sticking our Phlox Paniculata Kapow cuttings, I've got my tray prepared here, loose fill media, standard pH 5.5, 6.0, really not that picky. As far as rooting hormones, standard rooting hormones for Phlox, either your powdered rooting hormones or what more growers are going to for efficiency is the liquid KIBA salts. These can be applied after the cuttings are stuck. Just make sure you get enough volume because you gotta understand the tip of that cutting is still our target. So it takes a lot of volume to get down there, but this can greatly increase your efficiency. I also like to use pageant fungicide within 48 hours after sticking it helps with stress management. So as I stick my cuttings, I wanna be aware just how long the end of that stem is. I don't wanna stick it too deep, but I can stick that whole stem into the soil right up to that first node. That's usually about the perfect height for flocks. Here's Phlox Kapow after two weeks in propagation. One thing I noticed here right away is that they do tend to be a little bit slower on rooting out. We need to have bottom heats. Another critical factor for Phlox is they have to have long day photo periods. So that day extension or the night interruption lighting is critical for Phlox. Since these do take a little bit longer in propagation, fertilizer is very helpful. After about day seven, I would apply 2010-20 fertilizer as a heavy spray, as a sprench, at about 125, 150 parts per million. That's gonna help replenish the nitrogen in the leaves and the extra phosphorus in there is gonna help encourage the rooting even further. And so we're about day 14 now. We are just rooting out really nicely. You will notice here, if I do have issues with these, I like to leave my Darwin tags in the trays and so I can track this back. If there are issues with the cuttings further on down the line, I can notify Darwin Columbia that there were issues. Key point here then for growing these up, I like to see more of a CalMag fertilizer. Once again, that's gonna give me nice toned growth. We can see the roots coming here after day 14. This is about standard for this age. And before transplanting then, I do like to see just a single. We don't need to do a double pinch on the Phlox Kapows. They're very free branching as it is. Mm -hmm. 